Each year, as we approach and go through our anniversary livestream event, showing the sinking of the Titanic in real time, there's one question that tends to come up more frequently than any other. How do we select the times of the collision and sinking, and thus the time for the live stream to start? For years, we've been showing the collision at 10.38 p.m. in the Eastern U.S. time zone, and the sinking at 1.18 a.m. Now, how did we arrive at these times? That's actually a very good question. The simple answer is, very carefully. The more complex answer is, naturally, a little more complex. We have to start with some background. First of all, everyone knows that, typically speaking, five hours separates time in the UK, where Titanic's maiden voyage began, and New York City in the United States, where her maiden voyage was due to end. We will refer to these as Greenwich Mean Time, or GMT, and New York Time, or NYT. During Titanic's westbound trip, it was necessary for her to set her clocks backward incrementally. The time being carried by Titanic's clocks was referred to as a parent time ship, or ATS, which we'll also refer to as shipboard time. Now, everyone knows that Titanic struck the iceberg at 11.40 p.m. and sank at 2.20 a.m., some two hours and 40 minutes later. However, those times referred to Titanic's shipboard time, not time on shore. So what time was Titanic keeping when she struck the iceberg? As they travel the Atlantic today, modern cruise ships or ocean liners tend to adjust their shipboard clocks according to the time zone that they're traveling through, one hour at a time, until they reach their destination. However, this wasn't the procedure aboard Titanic. In fact, timekeeping was closely related to navigation and how fast the ship was traveling across the Atlantic rather than to any specific time zone. Every afternoon, Titanic's officers would calculate their ship's position, how fast she was traveling, and where they expected that they would be when the sun reached its zenith in the sky, called local noon, the next day. Then they would calculate how much of an adjustment they would need to make to their ship's clocks in order to have Titanic's clocks read 12 when the ship reached local apparent noon. If this sounds complex, it really was. But Titanic's officers were very, very good at this procedure. In fact, if any minor adjustments to the ship's clocks were needed, they would usually only amount to a minute or two, and those adjustments would be made during the morning before noon. So when did the big adjustment come usually? Well, this took place every night at about midnight. Notices were posted in the companionways every evening, usually before dinner, to inform passengers of the amount of the clock setback that would take place that night. Before they retired for the evening, and remember, people tended to go to bed much earlier then than they do now, many passengers would take note of the time difference, wind up their personal timepieces, and then reset them to match time for the next morning. That way, when they woke up for breakfast, they would know what time clocks read on board the ship. For the sake of the crew, when the clock adjustment was made, it was made in two parts, with one coming shortly after the other, so that the time adjustment was broken up rather evenly between two different watches. This meant that no one watch would have to stand duty for extra time during a westbound crossing like Titanic's. We know that Titanic's clocks were to be adjusted by a total of 47 minutes on the night of the sinking, broken up into a 23-minute setback and a 24-minute setback. Now, this would have taken place at around midnight shipboard time. But we also know that because of the collision, no adjustment was actually made. So this means that for the entire day of Sunday, April 14, 1912, and right through the disaster, Titanic's shipboard time was the same, all the way from the midnight before, when the last adjustment had been made to her clocks. So now the question is, what time did that shipboard time equate to in terms of shore time? Throughout that day and through the disaster, Titanic's shipboard time was two hours and two minutes ahead of time in New York, and two hours and 58 minutes behind time in the UK. This means that when Titanic struck the iceberg at 11.40 p.m. shipboard time, it was 9.38 p.m. in New York and 2.38 a.m. in England. 
When Titanic sank at 2.20 a.m. shipboard time, it was 12.18 a.m. in New York and 5.18 in England. So why don't we set the collision to match up with those times? Because of daylight saving time. In 1912, there was no daylight saving time. That didn't come into effect until the First World War. Daylight saving time, or British summertime, pushes clocks ahead by one hour. Now this effectively closes the two hour and two minute gap between Titanic's time and New York time to a mere one hour and two minutes. It simultaneously opens the gap between Titanic time and time in England to three hours and 58 minutes. So this year, as usual, we'll be showing the events of the Titanic disaster in real time, exactly how they happened, from the collision to the sinking and everything in between. We're going to start the stream shortly before the collision time of 10.38 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, or five hours later for our friends in the UK. Of course, don't worry. If the exact time these events happened is inconvenient for you to watch in real time, the live stream will be archived on YouTube for everyone to watch later at their convenience. We do hope that you're able to join us this year, however, in real time, as we attempt to preserve Titanic's memory exactly as the events of the disaster happened. We look forward to seeing you then.